Hey everyone, my name is David Dunbar, or the Theme Park Evangelist. I have not yet uh, thought about uh, what other discussion vlog I wanted to do um, this evening. Uh, the only uh, vlog I 100% knew in advance I wanted to talk about before I even came downstairs to vlog was my next How I Met TJ and K, sorry, K and TJ uh, vlog. Uh, the next one I wanted to talk about was uh, pretty much kind of what started my whole uh, YouTube channel. Just like, what really was the draw behind it? What um, was like really the whole incentive behind me wanting to start my YouTube channel? And what even pushed me forward to keep doing it, besides the fact that I just period enjoyed it. And then also, what kind of led up to that? So that's kind of what I wanted to talk about first of all, and then I'll think about another um, discussion topic that we can uh, discuss this evening. So let's get into it. So first of all, I wanted to mention that uh, before I even started the whole YouTube channel, I was actually um, already a Universal Pass holder. I think I mentioned that previously and briefly in my um, last vlog, but I'm going to really talk about it now. So, I think I mentioned that back in early 2016, I had become a, a Universal Pass holder on my own. And just kind of what really uh, made me want to do it, well, I thought to myself, well, considering the pa uh, sorry the cost of a uh, pass versus a ticket was really not that different, and I figured since I was into that phase where I really liked Universal, and I figured that I was, you know, being, w I was willing, I should say mentally, to go enough, I was like, well, you know, I might as well uh, go ahead and go get a pass. It's not like I'm not going to go all the time. So it was in early January of 2016. I bought myself a pass, and I had bought it under the pretense that, yes, I was going to use it all the time. Because uh, the very first time I um, bought anything for Universal was actually just a ticket. And my dad actually asked me, why don't you just go ahead and get a pass? Well, at the time, I didn't actually think that I was going to go a lot, but the funny thing is, after that very first day at, that I went to Universal, pretty much as a young adult, I realized how much I enjoyed it, and I thought to myself, you know, that's not a bad idea, so I looked at my financial situation at the time, and, you know, back about five years ago, when I didn't have as many bills, I could afford it, and I knew I could, and I was like, you know what, that's actually not a bad idea, so... If I'm not mistaken, I think I end up buying the pass outright. And I actually get, end up going quite a bit over the year. And I guess TJ happened to see that I was going quite a bit and I was enjoying it. And he uh, decided that he was going to go get himself a pass too. Now, I don't think TJ um, ended up getting a pass until way later on in the year. Because I know for a fact that about April 2017 or so, there was a day that um, we went out to Universal together, and that's when he and I went to go get him a pass. So I kind of, like, asked myself, so if I know for sure in 2017 he went and got himself a pass then how did he go in before? Unless there was a possibility my uh, cousin got him in or something like that, because I know there was a couple of times at the end of 2016 that he started going with me. Now, the majority of 2016, I actually was going by myself. Now, I was not YouTubing at the time. Now, I was actually going and I was looking for the time tracker, and I thought there was one time I was going through port of entry and I thought I saw the 10 tracker but I don't even remember offhand 
And that's kind of like what inspired me to start going to Universal in the first place because I knew how much uh, Tim loved going, so I really wanted to start going, and I was like really big on his YouTube channel between 2015 and 2016 because the very first YouTube video I saw of the Tim Tracker was the very first day that he went to Diagon Alley, and I watched that brand new, if that says anything right there. And, you know, I'm watching his videos, and the more I watched his videos, the more interested I got in Universal, the more interested I got into um, eventually starting to uh, YouTube. Now, I was going by myself a lot, so I didn't really stop and think about it, but there was a day in early December of 2016 that TJ and I went... And I think it was the very first time that TJ ever went with me to Universal. And I suddenly got this really big idea. What if I uh, started YouTubing as well? And, you know, I asked TJ about it. Now, I don't normally talk about this in my uh, normal vlogs. But this is a very special uh, YouTube series, which is why I'm going to tell you more of the backstory behind it in case you've never heard it before. But I thought to myself, you know... And I even asked him this, like, what if I started my own YouTube channel? Like, what do you think about that? You know, TJ actually was on board with the idea. Because it's not like I just suddenly decided to whip out my phone and start YouTubing, like, right then and there. And I, of course, TJ and I had a, a discussion about it while we were walking around Universal City Walk. And, uh, like, walking, oh, well, I should say, just prior to the uh, to City Walk. Because we were talking about it up until we got to City Walk. Because I actually started the vlog uh, over by Cinnabon and stuff like that. And, you know, I was like, yeah, that would be a like, really cool idea. I, would, I really could see myself doing this all the time. And TJ was like, yeah, why not, you know? And it was about Christmas time, you know, at Universal. So, of course, all the Christmas decorations were out. So... After we both agreed on it, I uh, pulled up my phone and I started vlogging. Now, obviously, I didn't know what I was doing, but I was willing to at least try. I didn't even know how my uh, camera options even worked on my phone at the time. And I didn't even know how it was going to look afterwards. And the very first time I did it, I absolutely sucked. But I actually did go back and watch it. And I thought to myself, you know, there is potential. I think I could actually do something pretty cool at this uh, whole YouTubing thing. I really think I could get better. And even though I did so badly with it the very first time, like, you would think, oh, I'm never going to do this again. I'm really bad about it. I actually looked at it as, okay, it could be better. It could be worse. But I'm willing to see what I can do with it. I think that there is definitely room for improvement. There's definitely room for growth. And I just kind of went from there. And TJ and I really enjoyed that uh, trip out to Universal together. And I think that's what inspired him to start um, going to Universal with me all the time. And, you know, until he became a pass holder, I'm very sure I had asked, like, my cousin or um, even my... Uh, friend, well, my, really, Kay's friend, Louie. Kay has a uh, close friend, his name is Louie, they're on a bowling league together in Winter Haven at a bowling alley called Cypress Lanes that we enjoy going to. And, uh, he's third shift in um, maintenance on the Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket, which I think is really cool. And, um, he has a bunch of tickets, too, just like my cousin Ryan, who's a manager over at Universal, and that's as far as I'm saying about him, because... He, because of the fact that he's family, I don't really want to say much about him other than the fact that, yes, he is a manager of a Universal, but you don't even know what he does. Ben, all I'm saying is his name is Ryan. I'm not saying what his last name is or anything. And I actually did get a chance to go see his place this year. It was a really nice place. I wish I could go out and see him again. It's just too bad that he's so far away from all my friends out there. But... It was worth going out to see him, and at least I had the chance to see him this year. And it worked out that my brother was there. I think that was the reason why I made the effort. I just wish I had uh, 
gone and seen the uh, Boris Spectacular. He's been pushing me to go see it for two years now, and I still have not seen it yet. Uh, there's a reason why he wants me to go see it, but I'm not going to say why, but let's just put it this way. Uh, he's almost attached to it physically. <laughs> That's as much as I'm going to say. But uh, anyway, uh, I did acknowledge my cousin Ryan in my very first vlog, which is why I brought him up again. Because of the fact that my cousin has been working for Universal as a manager for years. And uh, he has uh, hung out with us at Universal at least one time for my brother's 21st birthday. Uh, we all went to Hard Rock Cafe together. And then uh, my cousin treated us to, to some Chocolate Factory Emporium pretty much right next door. So I thought that was kind of cool that we uh, all did that. And considering that was like three years ago, it's been a while. Because my brother just turned 24, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he did, because uh, he's three and a half years uh, younger than I am, and I turned 28 in November. Still seems like my brother's 23, but I like, keep forgetting, yeah, that's right, he was uh, born in 1997, it's now 2021, so yeah, he's 24, right? Versus I was born in 93, and it's 21, I'm sorry, it's 2021 this year, so that would definitely put me at 28 this year. It's insane, but shows that I'm almost 30 now. Doesn't seem like I even look 30. I've always looked younger than I am. My brother actually looks older than me. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. <laughs> anyway, um... What I wanted to get at was just that whole first trip at the Universal of TJ is kind of what uh, got him interested in be, um, coming a, a Universal Pass holder. And it's kind of what also inspired us to start um, going out to Universal all the time and kind of what inspired a lot of uh, really cool YouTube videos that I've done. Now, I'm not really going to go any further because that's another vlog for another time. But um, some of the really cool vlogs I did after um, that uh, first trip out to Universal together would be, for example, in 2017, like early 2017, um, Race Through New York starring Jimmy Fallon was uh, nearing uh, the end of its construction. And that was like one of the very first things that I uh, wanted to start uh, featuring on my YouTube channel. And I think that um, I uh, also videotaped um, a celebration of Harry Potter that same year in early 2017. And then uh, later on in 2017, Race Through New York starting Jimmy Fallon opened to the uh, public. And uh, believe it or not, I actually skipped an entire college class just to attend it. I emailed the professor beforehand to let her know that I would not be there. But I did not let her know why I would not be there. But at least I had the decency to let her know I would not be there. But that was another thing I did with TJ when I was, um, you know, getting into the, more into the YouTubing thing. And then Volcano Bay opened at Universal. That was another thing I um, went with him to YouTube. All these things, there are many backstories to. And the Jimmy Fallon thing is such an in-depth a story that I could spend an entire YouTube video on that alone. Even the Volcano Bay story, I could spend an entire YouTube video on that alone. There's actually a lot more backstory to the very first time that Volcano Bay opened than, you know, the uh, good 30 to 45 minutes of footage I have. Like, I could tell you the whole entire background story behind that. And then I could start talking to you guys about the very first time I went up to Pandora. My uh, dad got us in, and actually, if it comes down to it, Kay and Del, Del is uh, Kay's best friend. And the reason why I'm not doing a YouTube series talking about him, or even my friend Vanita for that matter. So here's the thing. I should mention this before you know, I go any further in the series. 
Dell is Kay's best friend. Dell is just my friend, good friend. But that's about as far as I go with him. Vanita is actually a close friend of mine. But Vanita and I didn't really start hanging out, like, one-on-one -on -one until uh, May 21st, 2019, which was the last official day that I went to Disney as a uh, Floridian. After that, I've only been coming down to Florida once a year. And I've only come down for like a week or nine days at a time. And I've only been able to do Disney for maybe a couple of days at a time. And that's it. There's just so much to do in such a little time. Come, Granted, I've had friends come and go since I've moved away, which I expect. And that's fine. And since I've moved, I've actually wanted to take friends from up here down there with me. Because I'll tell you this right now. The longer I stay up here, the harder it gets to go down there and leave everybody and everything up here behind because you start getting attached to your new home after a couple of years. Uh, last year it was a little easier to go down there, but this year, like even this year, it was harder to leave. Like I got about halfway through the week and I was already getting homesick, <laughs> even with my brother there with me. I was like, I kind of want to go back home now. <laughs> I guess the longer I stay up here, the more I enjoy being up here. I mean, yeah, I would be a lot happier if I could be back at work right now, but unfortunately, I am still stuck at home until Sunday night. But the good news is I'm no longer sick, so I guess I have that going for me. Now I just have to wait it out. Uh, just following doctor's orders, you know how that is. But yeah, I stopped being sick earlier this week. Uh, Andrew, my roommate, said I stopped being contagious uh, five days after I got uh, the sickness in the first place. But I don't think I was contagious. Or I think I stopped being contagious, I should say, about mid last week, late last week, somewhere around there. Like, pretty much about a week after I got the sickness. And then... I knew by this week I would be fine, but at the same time, you know, you got to do what the doctor says and wait exactly two weeks after you first get diagnosed to be able to go back to work again. That's just how it works. It stinks, but, you know. But, yeah, as I uh, was saying, um, there are a lot of YouTube videos I could do just on... A lot of these solo trips, or the, these group trips, I should say, I made out to um, Universal of TJ. Um, ironically, in 2017, uh, I did some really cool YouTube videos. Like, for example, I went on uh, Dr. Doom's Fearfall, if I'm not mistaken, between 2017 and 2018. I have to go back and look for my very first time. And there's a really cool backstory behind it. And the person who actually influenced me to go on it was Kay. I don't want you guys to think that um, Kay's not important to this YouTube series. Because Kay uh, for, is someone I've known for almost a decade. And she does actually have a huge importance in my life. And I'm going to tell some really cool stories that will help you guys... Um, see that she really does have a, a huge importance in my life like the time I went on uh, Dr. Doom's Fearful for my very first time which was back a couple of years ago um, the uh, very first time I wrote Mission Space which was a couple of years ago I believe that was in 2017 if I'm not mistaken uh, that was another time that I did a YouTube video and there was a really cool backstory about it and once again Kay influenced me to go on Mission Space uh, the uh, short story behind it is Kay only wanted me to ride the uh, less intense training side, the green team, because Kay knew in her heart that I could handle it. If Kay didn't think I could handle it, then she would never have asked me to ride it. But she knew that I could handle it, which is why she um, finally convinced me to ride it. I even said to her about Dr. Dune's Fearful. I would ride Dr. Dune's Fearful if she went with me. And this had so was something actually we were discussing months before I even YouTubed it. And the video, as I said, is called, uh, I think I said it anyway, doing our first at Universal for the first time 
And the reason why I called it that is because all three of us actually wrote something for our very first time at Universal that day. For me, it was Dr. Doom's Fearfall. And the fact that Kay had been talking to me about writing Dr. Doom's Fearfall for months prior to the video says a lot. And it took me that long even to finally get on the ride. And to think that I was in my mid-twenties when I finally ride it, wrote it, sorry. Early to mid-twenties, somewhere around there, but still. I still cannot believe that it took me that long to ride Dr. Doom's Fearful and even to ride Mission Space. It's just like one of those things. And here's another funny thing. I'm 27. I turned 20 in November. I lived in Central Florida for 26 years, almost 27 years. I still have not rode Astro Orbiter at Magic Kingdom. And here comes the punchline. I rode, sorry, not rode. I worked at Magic Kingdom for a year. And I never, ever bothered to ride Astro Orbiter. It's not like I wasn't just going to Magic Kingdom that entire year I was working there as an employee. Like, I would always show up just to work. Like, obviously, when you work at Disney, you're going to have those shifts where you get out early enough that you can still go play in the park. So it's easy for me to just go pull the car around and, uh, like, take my car out of the employee parking lot, drive it up to um, the uh, guest entrance, do a U-turn, and go through that way. I would have already changed out of my costume by that point and still go play in the park. I had plenty of good shifts that I got out early enough and I still got my eight hours in. I just chose not to and it's not like I didn't have the ability to bring a change of clothes. And there were quite a few times where I did actually go play in the park, especially like on Fridays, Friday evenings, for example. I didn't always want to go home. I didn't feel like sitting in traffic for two hours and I especially didn't want to always take, um, 192 um, back towards um, 1792 because I had that option. That even took forever. So sometimes I just thought to myself, at this point, I might as well, you know, get done work, bring a change of clothes with me, which I did. And I would just take my car over to another park and I go play in the park or I go play in the Magic Kingdom. And then when I was ready to leave, I just drive back to my, or, well, I take the uh, transportation back to my car, and then just drive home. By that point, I4 was dead empty, pretty much, or almost empty, or something to that extent. And that's how I uh, used to um, go to Disney when I was working there. But I can get more into my uh, Disney work days later on, because that's another thing I want to talk about with this series is when uh, TJ and I worked at Disney together. I definitely want to talk about how um, I got hired at Disney first and how I encouraged Dis sorry TJ to go work for, or to get hired by Disney and just kind of everything that uh, occurred prior to that. And that also happened in 2017. So 2017 was a big year because uh, June 2017 is when both of us got hired by Disney. And that's something else that uh, you have to uh, look forward to with my um, YouTube series. Is, uh, I'm not only going to be talking about my um, Universal Days of TJ. You, are also, you also are going to be hearing about uh, how TJ and I got hired at Disney and just kind of everything that led up to that point and uh, why I uh, started after TJ did the first time. Now, TJ is working for Disney again. It only took him four years, but he is back again. And now he's actually going to be working custodial, which was the last position that I did working for Disney. And the only reason why I left custodial, as I mentioned in my Life as a Working Disney cast member series, I couldn't handle the fact that I was still getting drama from Toy Story Land while I was working in a different park, and if that's not bad enough, I was working in a completely different role that I was forced into. So, yes, I uh, did not feel comfortable working for Disney if I was going to be dealing with that. I'm not blaming the company by any means. 
but the only thing I did tell TJ before uh, he was like so eager to accept the role, just to keep in mind that working for uh, custodial or working in custodial at Disney is not as easy as it seems. So, just to warn you, now TJ is extremely good at uh, cleaning. Uh, some things TJ is way better at me at me at, at, than me. Sorry, I cannot talk sometimes. And there's some things at life that I'm better at than him. Uh, TJ is better at behind the scenes stuff, and I'm better at uh, public speaking, cu customer service, guest relations. TJ is not so good there. Um, not completely his fault. His autism is worse than mine, not to mention. Uh, he was brought up as an only child, and also um, because of the fact that his grandmother spoiled him most of his life, so, which is sad. Not necessarily his fault, once again. But just kind of circumstance worked out that way. Uh, TJ would unfortunately not be good for that kind of role. Now, TJ is actually good with working with people, but uh, he can only handle it for so long. But TJ is extremely good at cleaning. Like, I can, I can definitely um, promise that he can easily... Uh, be sent to clean something and not only can he do it quickly he can also do an extremely good job at it too like for me when I got asked to clean a restroom what took an average person 40 minutes to do to like to clean the Soren restroom for example took me two hours would take TJ 20 minutes and the best part is TJ can easily go into a Disney restroom because he did this with the Universal restrooms too. He'd go in there, he'd be done in about 20 minutes, and it was, and it would look spotless on top of that. So I know he can do it at Disney too. I cannot do that. I can easily uh, work with um, guest services. Like I would be the kind of person that could easily be working at a hotel desk at a Disney resort. Not necessarily him. That's not something that he is good at it as much, but for me, I would find that easy. Like, there's just, and that's the one thing I love about, um, you know, people in general. I love the fact that God creates everybody to be different. Everybody has their strengths and weaknesses. My strengths are definitely working with people and finding uh, the good in people and able to um, ignore um, faults in people and stuff like that versus... TJ can easily take a project and uh, do it within, you know, or in half the amount of time that uh, an average person can and still do that job about 10 times better than the average person. And not everybody can do that. Like, for me, like, stuff that I find easy is, um, besides working with the public, would be, um, like taking a project and working at it like college is ironically one of those things that I find very easy especially um, papers and even powerpoints I can easily spend up to an entire day just working on that project alone and I can excel at it it really depends on what exactly I'm being asked to do, especially if it's something I have knowledge about. And one last thing before I end this vlog. Uh, one thing that's really helps keep TJ and I's friendship strong over the years is the fact that we're both very similar, but we're also both very different. And the fact that I learn to look past TJ's issues and stuff like that and I learned to respect and accept TJ for who he is and I learned to see that TJ's really good at, at some things that he or some things in life that I'm not good at and I've noticed that the one thing that helps him stay strong friends with me is the fact that both of us enjoy a lot of the th same things we both enjoy going to Disney, we both enjoy going to Universal, we both like Kings Island, and we both love a lot of the same restaurants. And 
I think that's one of the major reasons why we're still strong friends to this day. But you'll discover that more as the YouTube series goes on. Anyway, enough of this vlog. Uh, let me uh, sit here, pet the kitty for a little longer and try to figure out um, what next discussion pose or topic to do about or to talk about. Until then, I will see you guys in the next vlog. And always remember, you can do all things through Christ strengthens you. Have a great evening. Peace out.